Okay, <clears throat> now that you've made it past the pre-migration, we're gonna go to the Migrate tab on the Migrate My Site and start with step zero <laughs> once again. So, step zero, and again, in my accordion, you're gonna see that there are videos for most of these things here. Uh, actually, it looks like for all of these things. So don't feel like this is the only training you have. You can always go get more detailed video in uh, the migration guide on the WordPress site. So number one, checking your migration status. So on your site, on Preprod, if you go over to Pages, and you go to migration status under pages, it's gonna give you a list of all of the pages on your site. And if it has a green check mark, that means that there are Gutenberg blocks on that page. This is helpful because you're going to have to take your entire live site and put all of that content in Gutenberg. So this is gonna be a helpful tool to show you not only what is out there, but also your site structure and whether or not you've begun migrating your site. Now, keep in mind, if you start to migrate a page, like let's say that I took a couple paragraphs of the getting started page and decided, man, this is too much, I'm gonna come back to it later, you're gonna have that check mark because it has Gutenberg blocks in it. So if you partially update a page, you need to make a mental note, write it down, put it in a sauna or some other task software. Just let yourself know in some way the migrator tool thinks it's done. It is not done. I've got to come back to that later. Okay, so migration status. Why is that important? Well, now we're going to need to set up our website menu. So before, and we're on our old theme, all of the menu, you really didn't have a lot of control over it. That was all handled in this thing called the tree view plugin and it built out your menu and everything. Uh, that is not default to the way WordPress normally works. So we're going back to the way that it's original, uh, originally intended. So if you go here and you look under appearance, there's going to be a sub menu called uh, sub menu called menus. Now you're going to want to name this menu anything you want. Primary menu, top nav, whatever you name it, that's important. You've named it the thing that it is. Just remember that. Okay. You can add menu items from your current pages. Like let's say I want to add online training. So I'm gonna add that to the menu. Go down here, it's always gonna add it at the bottom. And look, it's added online training. So I'm gonna click save to kind of show you um, the dangers of having this much flexibility over your menu. If I refresh this, look, I still have my heading, so that's gonna drop down. All right, it has added on, oh, well, helps if I save the menu and if I refresh the page it has added online training to the bar right here because I'm out of room at the top so a couple things to, to remember be mindful of the space but also you want your menu structure to reflect your site structure. So if I look here and there are uh, organize your pages under page settings, I want my site structure to reflect that. I want organize your pages to be under a page settings uh, page. I want that hierarchy to be reflected in the menu. So right now I'm actually gonna take this page and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to move things around. So I'm gonna say migrate my site. I'm gonna move this under the migrate my site tab under migration guide I'm gonna click Save and just like that when I refresh this page online trainings gone from there we just have the breadcrumbs now if I go to migrate my site you see online training is right there a great success 
Okay. Now, two things to note. Number one, some of these you can see don't have an overview page and some do. So overview just means that if I go to blogging, there is a page called slash blogging. But for page settings, I didn't really need a slash page settings page so that I could just link out to all these other sub pages. So I don't need an overview page. How do I get my menu to reflect that? Well, anytime you want to get rid of an overview page, you add a custom link where the URL is simply pound sign hashtag, whatever you want to call it. And the link text can be whatever you want to name the link text. So I've done that a couple times. So let's just look at this. The URL is a hash site settings. That makes site settings <clears throat> just a top level with no page behind it. Now, if I look at blogging, it has an overview page because in my menu blogging is an actual page. It's not the hash and then the word blogging. So again, to do that, you just go to custom links. You make that a hash, you type blogging and that's it. That's how easy it is to set up your menu. Now, number three, or number two rather, using your migrator tool. So we've given you this, this tool, which I highly encourage you to look through these training videos. There's a lot to the migrator tool, what it can and cannot do. So I'm showing you this example <clears throat> on the live site. So I don't have the migrator tool option. You have to be on a lower environment. Um, Again, all of this is covered in these videos. They're really good. But what this does is it gives you this button that's going to go scrape your live site for content and try to pull it into Gutenberg blocks. Is it going to be great? Probably not. It'll get you 80% of the way there, save you a lot of copying and pasting your content, but you're still going to have to move things around. You're going to have to migrate some blocks manually. Um, like gravity forms and things like that it just won't be able to handle so again not going to go into that content here there's tons on the training site go look at that there and then finally adding a featured image slider or video so we've given three options so I'm gonna pull back up our um, oh, this I've not refreshed this page I'm gonna pull back up our training page and I'm going to say edit and what we're going to do is maybe do all three options here unless I don't have a video lined up. <clears throat> so if you go to the page tab over here, remember we have the block tab and the page tab, you're going to have the featured image option on your site. So this is going to allow you to pick an image and be very careful which image you pick. You want it to have the right dimensions. This one's probably going to be large enough, so I'm going to go with it. And I'm going to add this image to this page as the featured image. Now what that does, and I'm going to click view, what that does is it adds that as the banner image right here, first thing on top, <clears throat> above the breadcrumbs and above the title of the page. Now if you want to add that title, and you want to overlay it onto that featured image, you can also do that. You check that checkbox right there, refresh this page, and there's the title. Awesome. Okay, well, I'm going to uncheck that, and we're going to look at the featured slider. So this is exactly like the slider block. So I'm just going to call it featured slider. I want a six second duration. I want my first slide to be that image we just looked at because it's really great. And then I want my second slide to be different. And again, you can link or add captions to these slides. And then I want my second slide to be, let's see, do I have another large photo loaded in here? Maybe, maybe not. We've added a lot of photos. I might just give up and pick a small photo for now. Let's 
Large? Uh, it's medium. All right, will we find one? The answer appears to be no. The answer is yes, <laughs> we found one. <clears throat> All right, I wanna select that photo. Okay, so you know what? Let's say it's autumn, so I'm gonna move this up here. We're gonna go to number one, number two. This is gonna be my featured slider. I'm gonna click update. And let's see what we're working with. Bam, great slider. Look at that. You can see we've cropped her head. We have information in our guide to show you how to crop these photos if you wanna have a featured slider. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna look at featured, remove, Remove, we're gonna look at the featured video. <clears throat> so I've removed the featured slider, but look, the featured image is still there. You have to go through a special training with CER and then have the featured video turned on for your site. It doesn't come by default. Uh, that's just because there are a lot of rules and a lot of specifications, so you really need us to go in and train you, and then we'll enable this feature for you. But when you do enable this feature, you can add your media, which I'm going to assume I have not preloaded into this website, uh, and nothing is going to fit <laughs> the item description that we need. Very, very specific um, technical specifications. Oh, look, we have one right here. Who knows what this is? Oh, okay. All right, add that, click update, and then your page will have a featured video at the top. And there, there you have it. Now, one thing to note here, that you may notice a flash. So, the featured title or the featured image is still working and the title overlay is still here. So you want your featured image to be the first frame of your featured video, okay? Because otherwise it's going to flash. So you want to have that first frame match the video so that while the video loads in the background, the user sees a still image and that's a seamless transition. Of course, all of that will be covered in the featured video training that you would go through. All right, and that's it. You're fully, I was gonna say trained, but you're fully ready to look through all of the other training and really get your feet wet. Now, as a last parting gift, I give you the feedback form. It's right here. If you experience any issues, something you think is not working, or a feature that you might like to see in the future, please don't hesitate to go to this feedback form, put your information in here, drop some screenshots. This, you, you don't want to email me or Lisa or anybody else directly because that's how your request gets lost. You absolutely want to fill out this form. It goes straight into our project management software and it'll get triaged to the right person in the quickest manner. So please do this, um, not just for us, it's for you. We don't wanna lose your request. We don't want the same issue to keep coming up because we keep just forgetting that it's in our inbox. So with that, I leave you and I hope to see you at a live workshop or an online workshop soon. Thank you. <laughs>